In fact, a lot of the photo imaging tools how have an automatic color correction on it. But they work so-so if the image is too dark, so-so if the image is too light. But if the image is density-wise, you know, the right uh, darkness, lightness, et cetera, perfect, you know, exposure, the color correction tool works very well. And even if it doesn't, if you have, let's say you take your picture under uh, tungsten lights, normal household lights, does anybody know what color they come out? Typically? Yellow. Yellowish. When you shoot under fluorescent lights, what color do they come out? Green. Greenish. Mm -hmm. It's because of the color temperature of the lights. Mm -hmm. It's missing part of the spectrum. Okay? Green lights, it's missing the red part of the spectrum. They make warm lights and cool lights for fluorescence. Your tungsten lights are yellowish. They look white inside your house. Go out at night and look inside your window. They look yellow, don't they? In an office building from the outside at night, don't the fluorescence look greenish? But your eyes adjust when you're in the light, but the camera is not fooled by that. So let's say you take a whole bunch of pictures and they're yellow. Once you adjust one photo, you can record your steps in most photo imaging software. Record your steps as part of what we call macro, a series of steps. So if you change, you know, add this much red or this much blue to make up for the yellow, you change the density a little bit, you can save all those steps and tell the software to apply exactly the same changes to every other picture you took. Wouldn't that make it easy if you only had to adjust one photo and just told the software, fix them all? Okay? But that's dependent upon what? Progress. Keeping the lights in the same spot when you take the picture. Right. Assembly line photography. Snap, 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 snap. Fix one image. Tell the software to keep track of your changes as you fix it. When you're happy with it, go, I've got a batch file. It's called a batch file, a macro. Then say, on this group of every image in this folder, do the same thing to them. 20 seconds later, they're all adjusted for you. No more color correction necessary. Just once, apply to all. I can take about, and get online, about 100 pictures per hour from the start, I start taking them to uploading them, 100 pictures per hour. This is a big debate on Vanessa. So we've talked about this many times in the forums. This is, this re re rectangle represents the actual image when you're looking at your main booth page. Okay, it's a rectangular format. It's in the ratio of five to four. Five this way, four this way. Proportion or ratio. That could be five inches, four inches, five centimeters, four centimeters, five pixels, four pixels. The unit doesn't matter. It's in a five to four ratio. Or, if you're a math person, if you divide five divided by four, you get 1.25. That means this is 25% bigger than this. So if this was 1, this would be 1.25. It's the same ratio or proportion as 5 to 4. But why is that important? Because if you take a picture of this item, this orientation, you can't get it to fill the entire rectangle mm -hmm. without cropping something, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to crop the top. or the bottom, or both. By default, it crops a little off the top and the bottom, right? If you took it this way, you can make this the five, but it's gonna be skinnier this way unless you have a bunch of white space around it. You can't fit a square or this kind of rectangle or even a horizontal rectangle into this same proportion. Mm -hmm. Something has to give white space, or in the case of ours, background space, the gray on the sides of the photo or the gray across the top of the photo. Here's what I do. Anybody have a digital camera with them? Mm -hmm. Can I borrow it for a second? First of all, measure your display. If you're lucky, it might be in a five by four ratio. Mm. If it is, fill it up as much as possible, keeping in mind 
which way you want the object. Okay? You'll know exactly how it's going to look when you upload it. If it's not in a 5 by 4 ratio, do what I do. I have a camera that's 6 by 4 because it happens to match the 4 by 6 print ratio that you get from the stores. Okay, so they made the display of a 4 by 6 ratio. I took masking tape, black, actually electrical tape, and I put it on the sides here and here, a little strip here and here, so I could only see a 5 by 4 ratio. Basically, I cut off a little bit from each side. So when I take my pictures, I fill up that space as much as possible, right? and I know exactly when I, when I cut off the sides and so on, and I have a little template that cuts it off, I know it's going to upload as best as it can get. As best as it can get. Because you can't fit this image, if it's a tall vase, you can't fit it into that rectangle, that way or that way, without cutting something off. It's not in the right proportion. A lot of people end up having a big space on their screen and a little image back here. Okay? And I could also zoom in, right? So it makes it look bigger. But you're still going to have a lot of white space here and a white space here. If you turn it this way, you're going to have white space up here and down here, unless you end up with a lot of white space. You can certainly enlarge that to fill this spot. So I found that tip to be very helpful. <laughs> it's just a crop the camera display with masking tape or electrical tape to kind of cover up the parts that aren't going to show. When you've, once you've made a sale, this has been alluded to already, take the time to thank your buyer. It will make your life easier. It'll make Elizabeth's life easier. They won't write to her and say, I haven't heard from my seller and my item's not here and I ordered it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It happens. It happens. There are also a lot of buyers that think that the uh, description that says ships within three business days they, they think they're going to get it in three business days. Mm. We all know that means you're going to ship it within the next three days. But buyers don't. A lot of buyers don't. They think they, you should have had it to them by now. And we're always pointing out, no, that really means that the shipper has until next Monday to ship it. And then however they ship it will dictate when you get it. So if you send them a thank you note, the minute you get a sale, you get a notification from PayPal, or probably Google, you made a sale, I reply to that. Because it goes right back to the seller. Or the, I'm sorry, the buyer, it goes right back to the buyer. I reply to it and I say, thank you for your order. I appreciate your business, your item will ship tomorrow. Your item will ship Monday. I let them know when I'm gonna ship it. Also, I don't use Google Checkout, I used to use PayPal. When I have my PayPal set up, when I print the shipping label, it automatically sends an email to the buyer saying, your item was shipped, here is the tracking number. I use delivery confirmation. So they're gonna get some kind of tracking information. But also, please take the time, if you can, to go into Bonanza and put that on your tra transaction summary or your transaction record. That helps us, too. Because when the buyer writes to us and they haven't checked their email, they don't know where to find the transaction summary under their items bought, you know, they, they can't do it for some reason or they don't want to. They say, I, I haven't heard from my seller and I don't know when my item got shipped. It helps us if we can go to your sales and say, oh, the, the, uh, the seller entered the tracking information right here. We don't obviously have access to your PayPal account. If you'd like to give me your passwords and stuff later, then it would be okay. Make sure there's a lot of money in there first. <laughs> but it would help co communicate with your buyer to tell them, yes, thank you for your order. That eliminates half of any other concerns. They heard from you, oh wow, they acknowledged my order, I know that they are processing it. And if you can say at the same time, I'll be shipping this next one Wednesday or next Tuesday, that will help a lot. When you do ship it, send them the PayPal tracking information or some kind of notice, the tracking information so they have it. Putting it on Bonanza is optional. How many of you have gotten those memos? Oh, yeah. from us saying, you know, you didn't put your tracking information. It tells you in there how to get rid of that if you don't want those notices. It's optional, but it would help a lot. Not only us, but it helps you as a seller communicate with your buyer. You will end up with happier buyers if you do that.
Relisting your item. This happens a lot. People say, I just sold it and I got three more in. How do I relist it? How many know how to do that? Okay. <laughs> if you go to your items sold section, and if you have permanently hid that transaction, by the way, you can go to your fees owed section and find the offer and still get to the transaction summary or the transaction record. You can still get to it. And in the bottom right corner of that individual transaction record or summary, there will, there will be a link that says relist items. And if you click that, it will basically duplicate the items you've sold and relist them. It will do that for everything you sold. So if you sold three items in that one order, one offer, and you only really want to relist one of them, it will relist all three. So then you would have to go in and edit out to delete two of them out of your booth. It will relist everything in that order. There's no way at this point to differentiate. I only want to relist this one. So keep that in mind. But you won't have to recreate the listing from scratch. <coughs> if you sell it on another platform, and you want to, you know, you don't have it anymore. Here's what I do, what I used to do, I don't really sell on eBay anymore, is that instead of deleting it off of Bonanza, reserve it. Put it on reserve. Because you never know when you get it in stock again, right? And then you just put it back for sale. You don't have to delete it. Just put it on reserve, it'll stay there until you're ready to market for sale again. Bring it back in case you get more stock in. Saves you a bunch of time. If it's a different color, you just edit it a little bit. Or come up with the closest thing you had, just edit it a little bit. <coughs> okay. I know you have questions. Hopefully we have some answers for you. So, uh, right. I'm ready for them if you are. Yes. Okay. Um, you were talking about the item inventory and how you could change for example, the quantity yes. by using that inventory ID and it would update it for you. Can you use that in the inventory ID? Let's say you want to change a lot of titles or descriptions because you've learned about keywords, for example, and you just want to do it in Excel or whatever and upload. I'm going to defer that one to Bill because I know it will update the inventory. I don't know if it will change anything else. We should, uh, we should answer that in our official Q&A section. Oh, okay. We need to hold off. I'm okay. sorry, but All we're right. supposed to hold oh. off on those to, to the round oh, table after. Oh, sorry. Okay. Just okay. Would you go ahead and answer this one, and then let's just hold off after that one, okay? okay. All right. So go ahead and give her her answer. Uh, okay. Well, I was, wait, I thought you were going to answer it, so I wasn't listening closely. Oh. Um, <laughs> I know that when you uh, upload uh, a new file and you have a matching ID, right. it will update the inventory. It will right. also update other fields. Uh, yes. Okay. So you can change the titles. You can change the traits. You can change anything in there. Basically, it looks for a match of so the, the, ID the ID in the new file and compares it to the ID okay. the old file and says, change everything. Very good. There is, there is one thing it won't change. Photos. The photos. Won't change the photos. Because that, and that's a good thing. At first, I thought that was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But if you've taken all the time to crop, to crop some mm -hmm. pictures mm -hmm. on site, and then you upload your, your new file, ugh. Yeah. So the photos are untouched with enough. Okay, thank you. Okay. There's a, that brought to mind another reason uh, why I don't use uh, gallery photos or photos in my listings anymore. Because if they're hosted somewhere and that file no longer exists, you get the famous, like, I can't find the link type message mm -hmm. in your description because, you know, it, it actually goes out and looks at that, that other website and brings the image over from it. And if the photo is gone off photo bucket or off Picasso, Picasso, then it's no longer in your description. Okay. Mark's staying in the forest.